Hey guys, want to make a quick video going over some announcements for this week. A few things that I wanted to point out to you from last week's assignments. The first one, um, the guided reading for the wilderness, uh, wilderness and Sinai section. There was a question on there that I wanted to just bring some clarity to. Um, Hamilton, the question here, Hamilton claims that Christians often treat the law of Moses like fish. They eat the meat and throw away the bones. What does he mean by this? Uh, I want to read what Hamilton says here and make sure you understand what he's saying and what he's not saying. He says, many Christians approach chapters 21 through 23, that's the book of the covenant after the Ten Commandments. Most Christians approach those chapters in the same way as they eat fish. The bones are to be thrown away and only the meat digested. To press the analogy, the Ten Commandments of chapter 20 are the meat... The eternal word of God is how Christians would evaluate the Ten Commandments. The following three chapters are bones. The unedifying, the unpalatable, the anachronistic, and hence the disposable. He is not agreeing with this assessment of chapters 21 through 23. He is saying that that's how Christians often treat chapters 21 through 23. Because... It's hard for us to understand how some of these things apply to us today. And so since it's difficult for us to process this, we usually just toss it away like bones. He's not saying that's what we should do. He's saying that too often Christians are in the habit of disregarding these chapters, even though they also are the eternal word of God. So don't think that Hamilton thinks it's a good idea for us to just disregard these chapters or that they're not the word of God. He's saying that that is unfortunately how Christians often treat them while at the same time treating the Ten Commandments, which are part of this whole section, as you know, valid for today and, and useful and good and the word of God. They disregard the other part that's really part of the same section. So I just wanted to clarify what he's saying there. Don't read him as being dismissive of chapters 21 through 23. Another thing that I ran into last week in my grading, I'm almost done. I'm still working through the reflection essays, but everything else has been graded. And what I ran into on the discussion boards, especially the resources section of the rubric, a lot of people are mis missing points for not evaluating the textbook as part of your discussion. Now, in the actual discussion prompt, there was a note there that you were supposed to watch the two videos, you were supposed to evaluate them, determine how well do they handle the material, and then underneath of the videos, you'll see that there is a reminder here, your post should integrate insight from the textbook reading. Every post that you do, every discussion post, your initial post, should in some way incorporate your understanding of your reading, uh, primarily to evaluate what Hamilton is saying. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Why do you agree or disagree? And also incorporating scripture citations. Those are important parts of every discussion. Uh, so please don't forget that you need to incorporate a, an evaluation of what Hamilton is saying. Some of you are citing Hamilton, but you're just kind of inserting a quote there, or you're using him to illustrate your point. I want you to tell me what Hamilton is saying that you agree with or that you disagree with and tell me why you're agreeing with it. What is it about what he's saying that you agree with? Maybe you can supply some scripture that backs up what he's saying or something like that. But evaluate, show me that you're evaluating what he's saying and not just taking it for granted. That's another thing I wanted to point out. So this week you've got two discuss or two guided readings, uh, one for Leviticus, one for Numbers, two discussions, one for Leviticus, one for Numbers, and one reflection essay. So there is a lot this week. Uh, there is a lot of reading this week. This is a pretty heavy week. Uh, I don't want you to get discouraged. Again, if you get behind on your textbook reading, you get behind on your Bible reading. You do have an opportunity to make that up. You don't have to report that reading until the end of the semester, but try not to get behind. And when you do, try to catch up as soon as you can. You don't want to be at the end of the term and you've got, you know, 50% of the reading still to do. So try to keep up with that. Just a few other things to, to kind of bring to your attention. Uh, again, with the discussion boards, try to have that rubric available. Um, pay attention to that. If you go into the modules, oh, I'm sorry, if you go to announcements, 
I've actually got an announcement here grading rubrics rubrics for discussions and essays and so I've pasted both of the rubrics here have that open as you're uh, completing your discussion post and your essay have that available to you so you can see for yourself what all do I need to do here to get a good score and have I done that along the same lines I'm also posting a video in this announcement to a video I made for a previous class for Old Testament Survey 1 going through the reflection essays and kind of pointing out how those should be structured and how to get a good grade on those uh, in addition to the rubric. So hopefully that's helpful to you. Uh, not required, but like I said, I, I want to offer whatever I can. Uh, beyond that, I want to also make a note about the Online Connect assignment. Uh, it's highly recommended that you choose the local mentor option, the field mentor option for that. Um, I'm not sure. I think that the Nine Marks Conference probably counts as the conference option, so that is available to you as well. Uh, but it has to be a conference hosted by Midwestern if you're going to choose the conference option. The final option is the book review. I do not recommend that you choose that option. Uh, though That is the hardest way to get full credit for this assignment. The field mentor option is the easiest way. The book report is the or the book review is the hardest way to get full credit. So, um, be sure that if you choose the book review, that that's really the only option that you have, and make sure that you choose a book that is on the list. I, I will not give credit for reviews that are not approved books. And finally, make sure that you're following the Midwestern Style Manual and its recommendation for book reviews because those are graded quite. Uh, strictly. If you have any other questions or anything else comes up, don't hesitate to reach out. But those are the things that I wanted to cover this week. I hope you're doing well.